Hello, everyone, and welcome to Science Unscripted. It's Connor here. And Gabe. And imagine you've got a, a four-year-old or a, or a six-year-old or a seven-year-old standing in front of you. Or, or an eight-year-old. I've, or I've an got, eight-year-old I've or got a nine-year-old. One of those. Yeah. And you ask that kid if it's okay or, yeah, if he or she thinks it's okay to stomp on another kid's foot. Listen to the answer. It's, a, it's you, a good question already, yeah. right? Is that okay? And then you say, what if God said that the, the opposite is, is right? So if the, if the kid says it's, it's not okay to stomp on another kid's foot, and then you say, God no, says it's yeah, okay. God, God says you should do God it. God says it's, it's okay. It's a really good thing to do. Stomp on a foot. Smash it. What does the kid think then? That's the, that's the entire premise of a really fascinating study, and we're going to go to Madeline Reinicki to talk about that study right now. Science Unscripted. My name is Madeline Reinicki. I'm a postdoctoral researcher at the University of Oxford, and together with my collaborator, Larissa Heifetz solomon we recently published a paper in Cognitive Development looking at what children think about whether morality could be made different by God. And what do children think, or what was what was the primary conclusion of your research? So the primary conclusion is that in both ages of kids we tested, so that was four to six year olds and seven to nine year olds, we see that they tend to think that morality couldn't be changed by God, that widely shared aspects of morality, the kinds of things that we all tend to agree about, they think that those things have to be the way that they are, that they couldn't be changed even by an omnipotent entity. And how did you find that out? What did you ask these kids? So what we did is we asked about three different kinds of questions. First, about widely shared aspects of morality. So things like stomping on another kid's foot really, really hard, that that's immoral. That's something that most people would agree on. We also asked about controversial aspects of morality. So things like stealing food to feed another hungry child or telling a white lie to make someone else feel better. And then we also asked about non-moral states, so physical facts about the world, things like germs being smaller than houses or fire being hotter than snow. And what we found was when we asked kids, first off, what their beliefs were. So we would say, for example, here are two kids, one kid thinks this and the other kid thinks the opposite. Which kid do you agree with? We would get their certainty on that judgment. And then we would ask, well, what if God made it otherwise? What if God made it morally right, for example, to stomp on another kid's foot really what, hard? What happened then when, when you told them that, that God, God changed the, the, the rules on this? What, how did they respond? Well, what we see is that kids tend to deny that God could change the rule, that they say God couldn't make it morally right to stomp on another kid's foot really hard. You know, on the off chance that they said, I think it's okay to stomp on another kid's foot really hard. Well, then we would ask them, could God make it not okay to stomp on another kid's foot really hard? So they had to confront what the possibility of whatever, whatever's the opposite of what they just, the opposite of what they believe. Did you get any information on their, on the kid's relationship to God or how they were, brought up with regard to religion? That's something I would really love to look at with more granularity in the future. What we do have a little bit of insight into is parent religiosity. So for about half the sample, we have at least one parent religious demographic. Um, and what we see from that information when we put that into our statistical models is it doesn't change the findings that I'm talking about here. So it wasn't the case that that these findings are driven by religious children or non-religious children. For the kids that we tested, their parent religiosity didn't make much of an impact. So this, this is in them. This moral um, certainty is, is within them regardless of, at least within this study, regardless of what their religious situation at home is like. So it seems that way. I actually also have some work with adults that shows a similar kind of pattern. So this suggests that over the course of development, it seems like there are some aspects of morality that we just can't think of being otherwise. We can't consider the alternatives that maybe 
what if morality was completely different from the way that we know it to be, like even at its most fundamental? Well, I guess that's my question because it, let's assume that whether or not their household is religious has no effect here at all. Um, children grow up within some sort of context, and even by the age of four to six or seven to nine, they've had adults along the way who are are shaping their moral views on the world. And so is it possible that that sense of inner morality is not evolutionary biology? It's not innate. They weren't born with it and had it within them, but they've been coached along the way by the people who've been around them? Yeah. So, I mean, it's certainly, at least from my own perspective, both. So I, I wouldn't want to say that there's no effect of socialization on children's moral beliefs, or in this case, their, their beliefs about God. But what I think this gives us some insight into is that even at age four, which is relatively early on in development, especially for something like religious socialization, we're seeing not much of an effect. There wasn't a, a demonstrable effect between the youngest kids we tested and the oldest kids we tested in terms of their evaluations of widely shared moral beliefs. How big could could this study be? I mean, do we do we need God anymore as a moral compass if four to six year old and four to six year olds and, and seven to nine year olds clearly don't need that idea to to make judgments? Well, I'll say this, and maybe this even goes back to Connor's earlier point about sort of the origins of the moral sense. Um, you know, is this something that we have to be taught, something we have to be socialized? There's work going back all the way to three month olds. So these are pre verbal infants. And what researchers find there is that even these, these infants that can't reliably grasp for things, just by looking at the way that their eyes move, you can tell that they can distinguish between helpful pro social actors and anti social actors. So it seems like there's some kind of moral predisposition that if not innate, is extremely early emerging and not due to socialization and learning from parents or things like this. Can kids understand what God is? Or did you, did you get a sense from your study and dealing with these kids that they could even understand what that means when you said, well, God says it's right? How did they, re how did they react to that? Yeah, so to be fair, there were some parents who were like, they, and m many of these interviews were done over Zoom because this was during the beginnings of the pandemic. Sometimes parents would pop in and be like, my, my kid doesn't know, doesn't know what, what God is or anything. But even setting that aside, there's a really fantastic literature that suggests that kids develop these concepts very early that maybe kind of like we come in predisposed with a moral sense. So too do we come in predisposed with an ability to think about supernatural agents and that they'll tend to ascribe greater supernatural capacities. So for example, things about embodiment, like say, could God get into this box without opening it? Um, say I put uh, markers inside of a box of tea. Does God know what's inside? Questions like this. Children tend to say that, that God uh, would be able to accomplish these things. If my understanding of morality is that it comes from God, does your study destroy that? I don't think so. I don't think, I, I would say our, our work is entirely descriptive. It's about what people think about morality. We can't actually say whether morality comes from God or whether it doesn't. But what this does suggest is that people's beliefs about whether morality could be different and whether it could be changed or altered by God, that those beliefs are early emerging and, and potentially, potentially persistent throughout human development all the way through adulthood. That was a great and nuanced answer. I'm just trying to make sure that I understand it because <clears throat> I would have, I would have thought that what Gabe said is what your, is what your research shows. If I'm honest, because if, if you have children who reject the idea at a very young age that God can really inform them at all about what they should or shouldn't be doing in the real world, especially when it comes to hurting other people. And intuitively. Yeah, they don't even have to think twice about it. No, of course that's wrong. Even if God tells me to stomp on a kid's foot, no way. Mm -hmm. Then that would suggest that you don't need religion for children to be moral little creatures. 
Well, the relationship between religion and morality is an interesting one. There's there's a very fascinating literature about whether religious folks are more ethical than non-religious folks. And the way that I understand that literature is that the answer is typically no, there isn't a difference between religious and non-religious folks in terms of, of pro-social behavior. But in terms of where morality itself actually comes from, what the rules are about what's right and wrong, I think you have to be careful about making the jump from what we see descriptively of what people think is morally right and wrong to what's actually the case. So sometimes, if I'm remembering correctly in philosophy, this is sometimes called a, a debunking argument, that if what we think is right and wrong just comes from evolution or, or from, from whatever our predispositions might be, who's to say that that actually matches the, the truth of morality out in the world? We can't exactly know from this work whether or not what kids are saying is the truth, but we do get some insight into their developmental moral cognition and what they're thinking about morality, and we see that as robust over time. But whether or not we get it right, that's sort of a separate question. And that was Madeline Reinecke talking to us there from Oxford. From her new apartment. Just moved into a new apartment. Yeah, and she's Oxford. working there with the Oxford U Hero Center for Practical Ethics. If you're interested in going to the actual study itself, it is t- entitled Children Deny That God Could Change Morality, and it was published in Cognitive Development. I have a four-year-old at home, but I don't, I don't really know her assessment of, of moral laws. Her assessment of moral laws, <laughs> so that you'd ask her at the dinner table. Well, I've well, I've never told her that God says that. Um, oh, yeah. Says the opposite of what she believes when it comes to um, like moral axioms. I would love for you to ask her. See, see tonight. What, tonight. I'll get back. Yeah. I'll get back to you. see what she says on whether or not she should stomp another kid's foot. That'll actually be funny to hear her answer on that one. I, I bet she's done that. Well, if God told she's, her to? Yeah, she's rough. So then she would have to hear that that God says it's okay. Because I'm sure that she stomped on another kid's foot. She stomps on my foot. She stomps oh, on so our she dog's think, foot. She thinks it's okay, regardless of whether or not God has said that you should do that. Yeah. She just, it's okay. It's okay yeah, to do She it. hasn't learned empathy yet. Yeah, well, um, <laughs> that's, a, that's a wrap for today, I guess. Um, if you have any other thoughts on what is a, a, a topic, I don't know, that is, is this the biggest one? One of the biggest ones, I don't know if it gets much bigger than talking about what causes human beings to be good or evil. Yeah, where does morality come from? That's what this is all about. Email us, su at dw.com, leave a comment, and we'll get back to you. Science Unscripted.